Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're working our way through our book, Math Test Success, ASVAB Algebra, so you can be successful on any standardized math exam like the ASVAB Military Placement Exam. This course is designed to get you back in the game if you've had kind of a spotty math history or like you missed a few pieces and never made sense. This whole course, 25 chapters of it, is de designed to bring you up to speed. So what I'm doing in this book, there should be a digital download and a paper uh, book you, you'll be able to purchase. I'm not quite done with it yet, but as soon as I get it done, I'll make it available. I'm trying to get that digital download available as soon as possible. And the whole point of this book is that there's going to be a video for every chapter. So this is currently chapter eight. You'd have that book in front of you, or if not the book, at least a notebook and paper and pencil. And we're going to go through this together so you're not on your own going through the math learning process. I'll be there every chapter, every step of the way. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with chapter eight, solving inequalities and only one variable inequalities. So to start with, what we have here is an inequality. It is not quite equals. That's what inequality means. So we have equations like 3x is equal to 9. That is an equation. To solve that equation, I divide both sides by 3, and I get x is equal to 3, 9 divided by 3. An inequality is treated pretty much the same way, but it means everything less than. And the way I remember this, if I have x is less than 4, say, I'm reading from left to right. This is the smaller side. So that means x is less than 4. This symbol right here is a greater than symbol. Here, x is greater than 4. So that means x could be any number greater than 4, like 5 or 6 or a million, anything that's greater than 4. I also have less than and equals to. A less than and equals to 4 means in this case right here, x could be equal to 4, so x could equal 4. It could also equal 3, 2, 1. And they don't have to be integers. It could also equal 3.999. And then greater than or equal to is um, this. And this is saying x can be greater than 4, like 4.1 or 5, or it could be equal to it. You can graph these on a number line. So on your number line is really your xy axis, and we're only looking at the x-axis. I usually put a zero in there to give it some sort of reference. If I'm graphing this, x is equal to 4. Well, I just put a dot right there. It is equal and greater, so then I open it up that way. So it's saying x is greater than or equal to 4 is an arrow to the right. We put another one here. Let's say I have x is less than 1. It is not equal to 1. It is only less than 1. That is an open circle to say it is not inclusive, and it goes that way. One other key thing to remember in solving these inequalities, if I have negative 3x is greater than or equal to 9, trying to get x by itself, it is being multiplied by negative 3, reverse operations division. I divide both sides by negative 3. These cancel, giving me x by itself. 9 divided by negative 3 is negative 3. Get ready for it. Here's a big idea here, and it's a hard one to remember. When I multiply or divide by a negative, I reverse that sign. So this now becomes less than or equal to. So that's a very important note to make. When you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative, you reverse the sign. Okay, let's take a look at some of these examples here. These are really just taking sentences and putting them into inequalities. So it's a conversion of the English language into the math language. So x is less than 5, looks like that. y is greater than or equal to, that's why it's got that little bar under it, negative 2. Again, reading from left to right. A number p is less than 10. Go ahead and pause the video and work your way through these problems right here. Unpause the video, make sure you got them right. Number two, a number q 
is greater than or equal to negative 4. R is at most 6. So R, I got R and a 6. What is that saying? R can be equal to 6, but no more than that. So it has to be less than or equal to a 6. A number is at least negative 1. So that number is S. So it's saying S is at least negative 1. That means it has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. Whoops, I said greater than and I wrote less than. So S has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. So let me see. Let's pick a value for S that is greater than that. Let's say 5. Is 5 at least negative 1? Yes, it is. So I could see I did that right. Number T is more than 2. A number U is no more than negative 8. So that means it has to be less than or equal to negative 8. A number U is no more than negative 8. A number V is no less than 3. That means it has to be greater than or equal to 3. Let's double check that. Oh, pen didn't work on that one. So V is greater than or equal to 3. So let's say V is something like 10. Is 10 no less than 3? 10 is no less than 3. That is correct. It's a double negative there. W is fewer than 0. A number X is not greater than 7. That means it has to be less than 7. They're tricky. The translation of sentences to math are tricky. Number y is not less than negative 5. It's going to be greater than or equal to negative 5. Again, let me just pick a value and see if that's right. 10 is not less than negative 5. That is correct. A number z is strictly above 12. z is greater than 12. Number a is below negative 9. Those are tricky. Um, good job working your way through there. Let's move on to section 8.2 now. And this is solving inequalities. It is kind of following the rules of algebra and then graphing them as well. Again, use an open circle for not including the value and a closed circle if it is equal to it as well. So as an example here, if I have x plus 3 is less than 7, I treat this whole thing just like an equation with the one caveat, with the one deal, when you divide or multiply by a negative, you reverse it. That's the one thing that's different. So here, I'm adding 3. To reverse that, I subtract 3, and I get x is less than 4. On this problem right here, negative 2y is greater than or equal to 6. I divide by that negative. Those cancel. That gives me y by itself. Divide this by the negative. That gives me negative 3. However, Dividing by that negative takes that thing and flips it around. Uh, let's work through these practice problems right here. A minus 2 is greater than 5. I'm going to add 2 to both sides to get A is greater than 7. Divide both sides by 3. B is less than or equal to 9 divided by 3. Here's the important one. I'm dividing by a negative 4. That's going to give me x by itself. I am dividing by a negative. I flip that thing around. 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. I'll do this one over here. 2y plus 1 is greater than or equal to 4. Subtract 1 from both sides. 2y is greater than or equal to 3. Divide both sides by 2. Those cancel. Y is greater than or equal to 3 halves, or is a mixed number 1 and a half. This one right here, this is a good one. This has got that trick in it. Negative 3x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 20. Subtract 5 from both sides. Negative 3x is greater than or equal to 15. Divide by negative 3. That's going to give me x by itself. X, 15 divided by negative 3, negative 5. 
And then don't forget this right here. I got to flip that thing around to look like that. All right, section 8.3, inequalities in word problems. Um, kind of like what we did before. Here are some practice problems here. The sum of a number, so the sum of a number, we'll call that number x, and 5 is no more than 12. So I'll call it that right there. Let's double check that. Let's solve this, subtract 5 from both sides. x is less than 7. So if I picked a number that's less than 7, like 0, I take 0, plug it in there. Is 5 less than 12? Is that number no more than 12? Yes, it is. 3 times a number is greater than 15. Divide both sides by 3. X is greater than 5. And then a value is no less than 7. That means it has to be greater than or equal to 7. And again, a double check. Something that holds true right here is 8. Is 8 no less than 7? Yeah, 8 is greater than 7. So that one works right there. Okay, here's a test on chapter 8. Again, I pause the video right here, do the problems, and then unpause the video, watch how I do them. Write an inequality. A number, we'll call that number, is greater than negative 3. A number is less than or equal to 8. A number is at least 5, so greater than or equal to 5. Again, let me pick a value and plug it in there. Is 6 at least 5? Yeah, it is. 10 at least 5? Yeah, it is. A number is at most negative 2. So if I had a number like negative 2, is negative 2 at most negative 2? Yep. If I had negative 10, is negative 10 at most negative 2? Yes, it is. All right, solving and graphing. Number 5, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides to get x is greater than 5. To graph that, there's 0, there's 5. It is not inclusive, open circle, and it's greater than. Here, y, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, is less than or equal to 7. Here, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. a is less than 7. This one right here is a tricky one. I divide both sides by negative 3. So I have negative 3b is greater than or equal to 9. I divide both sides by negative 3, giving me b by itself. Because I divide by that negative, I flip that thing around. 9 divided by negative 3, negative 3. Number 9, I subtract 1 from both sides here to get 2m is greater than 3 minus 1, 2. Divide both sides by 2, m is greater than 1. I'm going to add 7 to both sides here to get 4p is less than or equal to 12. Divide both sides by 4, p is less than or equal to 3. That's a tricky one here. Let me rewrite over here. Negative 2x plus 3 is less than 7. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Negative 2x is less than 4. Divide by that negative, giving me x by itself. Because I divide by that negative, flop that thing around, negative 2. I guess the reason why I say that so much is it's such an easy mistake to make. Um, and almost always part of a standardized exam where you divide by that negative, especially in the math knowledge portion, um, to see if you remember that rule. Lastly, number 12, 3y minus 2 is greater than negative 1. I'm going to add 2 to both sides to get 3y is greater than negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Divide both sides by 3, and y is greater than or equal to 1 third. All right, let's move up to these word problems right here. I guess I could have left a little more room. The sum of a number and 7 is less than 15. Then I'd solve that, subtracting 7 from both sides. 
x is less than 8. Number 14, twice a number is at least 10. So that means it has to be greater than or equal to 10. So then I divide both sides by 2. x is greater than or equal to 5. A number is decreased by 4. A number decreased by 4 is no more than 6. So that means it has to be less than 6. I don't think it's equal to. Add 4 to both sides. x is less than 10. 3 times a number, 3 times a number is increased by 2 is greater than 11. Subtract 2 from both sides, 3x is greater than 9. Divide both sides by 3, x is greater than 3. A value, we'll say a value, whatever that is, x, divided by 2 is no less than 5. That means it has to be greater than or equal to 5. Multiply both sides by 2 to get x is greater than or equal to 10. And the last one, if you're still here, fantastic job sticking with it. I know it's, 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 it's work. It, it's hard to do this stuff. But the more you study, the more you practice, the more you actually do problems, the better you get at them. And the goal of this is 25 videos, 25 chapters, one a day in one month. You're able to go back to wherever you need to be in math. Pass that standardized math exam. Take the next college level math class. Whatever it is, this is the foundation. A number subtracted from 9. So that means 9 subtracting that number is at most, is at most 3. Subtract 9 from both sides. This is a good tricky one here. Negative x is greater than or equal to negative 6. I get that x by itself. I divide by a negative 1, right? That's going to give me rid of those negatives. That's going to give me x by itself. But I am dividing by that negative. That thing flips over. Negative 6 divided by negative 1 is 6. All right, well done. Again, if you're still here, uh, thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. Any questions, please post them in the comments. Thank you.